What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and in this video we're talking about building applications, building web applications, building websites, how you can get started building your own thing. It's not that hard. You just got to go do it. Let's jump right into it, team. All right, team. So I was over on reddit.com forward slash r learning and someone asked the question, how do I build an application that will tell me when something on a web page is changed and I looked at this and I thought okay if I was gonna build an application that told me when something on a web page was gonna change how would I go about it and the first thing that popped in my head that popped into my head was PowerShell because PowerShell is a, a scripting language and a terminal environment and if you wrote if you it, and it, it would just be a series of commands and because PowerShell is built on top of Windows it will allow you to do just about anything you need to do you can do HTTP requests you can download files you can save the files you can use PowerShell to to run commands uh, to to run commands to other programs so in my case I was thinking okay I would use git right because I don't know exactly how to compare a file using PowerShell like it, it, you can learn how to do this in any programming language but I was like hey git is already on my system if I have a file and I take that file and I if I create a git repository and I put that file in the git repository and I commit it then that then when I get the new version of that file then I can just do a git diff and if something is changed then I can have the program send me an alert I would have to dig probably into the git API to see um, to see how I would call git using PowerShell for instance and then how I could get git to return something to PowerShell so it runs a command that does something else and then I was thinking well if I can do it in PowerShell I would definitely be able to do it in Python because there's all kinds of modules built in Python to do all this stuff well, here's the deal, right? It is not hard to build. Well, I, I, I take that back. It is hard to build software, but in order to make it easier, the best thing we can do is sit down with a piece of paper and like literally it's to sit down with a piece of paper, just a piece of, it doesn't have to be grid paper. I like grid paper because it makes it easy to draw. Like you can just, you can use the little squares and you can make all your boxes. You can mock up whole websites, whole web pages. You can put notes in the side. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can mess around with scale because you have the grid squares. There's just all these different things you can do. You can make, I make a lot of lists, so I got a list of stuff right here. But you want to write down what it is you want to build. And I would say, I don't, it, it's not necessary, but depending on what it is you're trying to learn, what it is you're trying to build, the type of project you're trying to do, what you want to accomplish, I would say, write down why it is you want to do that thing and this applies to learning as well like when we go out and we say for instance I want to learn Ruby well we have to ask ourselves why do we want to learn Ruby because the time we spend learning Ruby we're never gonna get back now if we're learning Ruby just to get a feel for programming fantastic all we have to do is write down I want to learn Ruby to get a feel for another programming language and then you put like what is your goal like what does it look like when you've done enough Ruby well I can build tic-tac-toe using the Ruby programming language and I think for me that is good enough and then that would be it and so now when you set off to learn Ruby you're like I'm gonna build a tic-tac-toe application and now that you know you're gonna build this tic-tac-toe application and because it's just you you're not going through a tutorial somebody else hasn't sat down and mapped all this stuff out already you would then go start to learn the well before you even start to learn the, the programming language you will write down exactly how this application is going to work and this applies to any anything you want to build if you want to build a game if you want to build you want to build a house or car or motorcycle whatever the same concept applies any human can do anything if they break it down into small enough easy enough steps that's it it makes it infinitely easier when you have your paper and you just write down what all those steps are then you have a check sheet go build this thing and do that go build this thing and do that you, right and you just go down the sheet by the time you get to the end of the sheet you have whatever it is you set out to build so before you even go to learn to to, to pick up the language or learn the language in in our example for, of tic-tac-toe we would say okay what what makes tic-tac-toe tic-tac-toe first the first thing i want to do is i want to draw a grid on the screen that's it the first thing i want to do is i want to draw a tic-tac grid on the screen so how am I gonna do that and what programming language am I gonna do this in and what platform is it gonna run on if it's gonna run on the internet fantastic all we need is HTML CSS and JavaScript so we need to know how to make a grid 
using HTML. We're probably going to have to use some CSS to put the lines where we want them to be. And then we'll need JavaScript in order to manipulate our CSS in order to place our X's and O's on the screen and probably keep track of the order of players and also the score. Now, if we want to store this information, the next step would be figuring out what storage is, right? Like it could be a million different ways. Somebody may decide they want to make the grid and then they want to put a scoreboard and then they want to have the score and then they want to make the score tracker. The point is, is that if you walk through what you intend for the game to do, right? If it's going to be one player mode and a two player mode and in one player mode, I select a letter and then a computer randomly selects another one of the boxes and uses the letter that I didn't select. And we would play this game and if any of these three letters lined up, then the game would call out the winner and update the score and ask the user if they want to play again. That's a whole cycle of this program. And so now that you have the whole cycle, you can go in off and begin to build that and you just break down all the pieces. The first thing I need is the grid. The next thing I need is the scoreboard. The next thing I need is the score. The next thing I need is is for a user to click in this place. So that means you have to have an event listener on that particular place where the user is going to click and what's going to happen when they click there. If they click here and this space is empty, then insert the letter that they chose to play with. If this space is not empty, then bring up an alert box. And so as you walk through this stuff, there's other things that are, that are gonna come up and you're gonna be like, oh, I need to build this thing. So you don't have to sit down and really map everything out when you get started. You just wanna map out your minimum viable product. What is what is the least amount of thing that this application needs to do? That, that sounds crazy. What what I'm saying is, what is the the core functionality of this thing? In the case of a tic-tac-toe game, the core functionality is for me and one other person to play a game of tic-tac-toe. I'm not worried about graphics. I'm not worried about any sort of extra fancy stuff. I may not even worry about keeping score or anything like that. Because if I can get the game to where two people can play tic-tac-toe, then I can add all of the other stuff. The same with being able to get an alert whenever a website changes. The core of this application is to to one, be able to get the website, two, be able to get another version of the website and compare them and then send me an alert. After I've got that built, then I can go build, worry about all the other stuff. I can build a nice user interface, I can build a back end, I can start adding in options. I can do, I mean, the sky is the limit, but we just need a starting point. And most people, they don't have the starting point because we're so used to going to school and sitting in a classroom or going through a tutorial and having somebody tell us exactly what to do. What you got to do is you just got to decide what it is you're going to do, map it out, and then pick the technology that you're going to do it in. And you're going to run into roadblocks. And whenever you run into one, you may have to decide, okay, I'm going to use this technology to do this other thing. So maybe if you need a database, you go, I'm going to use FaunaDB as my backend database because it's on the internet, it's always accessible, all I need. And Fauna has an API that I can use to just hit my database when I need it. So I'll, I'll build out everything I need here and then I'll track all my scores using FaunaDB and I'll just interact with the database like that whenever I need to, you know, put that in the database and get data back. The only way to really learn this stuff is to, is to go out and just start doing it. But if you just don't know where to start and you don't know what to do, pick a book or pick a tutorial and just go all the way through it. And you pick the book or you pick the tutorial or you pick the online course, or you pick whatever based on what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you wanna build web apps, then you're looking for HTML, CSS, JavaScript course. If you want to build, if you wanna do something heavy with data science and is it may be on the web, but maybe you're not positive, you may wanna go with Python because later on you can add in a framework like Django or Flask and then you can build your whole website around this, this complicated Python application you built. If you want to build a game and you want it to run on Windows, then you would use C Sharp or, or go out and grab a Unity game engine or something like that. Long story short, the most important thing you can do is figure out what it is you want to build, why you want to build it, and then map out the minimum functionality it needs to have without any fancy colors or screens or anything like that. What is the minimum functionality? And then decide what is the first thing I'm going to work on. And then you work on that thing until it's finished. And then you go on to the next thing. Each thing shouldn't be too big. Break it down so you're able to start a, a portion of it and it just has one piece of functionality and you can function on making that one piece of functionality do what it needs to do. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. You won't have to hold a bunch of stuff inside of your head.
All right, team, that is it for this edition, this episode, whatever you want to call it. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I hope that helps. Leave some comments below and also hit the thumbs up button so other people on YouTube get to see this video. And if you want a hat or a sticker or a mug, go over to writecodedrinkcoffee.com where you can get merch to keep you inspired while you move along your journey to becoming the person you want to become so you can do the things you want to do and live the life you want to live, team. Um, a lot of exciting stuff coming down the pipe. I'm beginning to really dig into the Code 365 Startup Lab, like master, the, the whole master plan of it, right? So right now there's like six or seven free courses there. Um, they're super basic. They're, they're, they're really just made for people who, who are looking for something to do. Maybe they want to learn a little bit more about uh, HTML and CSS, but this is really super beginner level stuff. But the actual course course, and some of you guys have signed up for it already, is going to is going to break down everything we need to build a web application and we'll be building projects inside of there. So if you want to support the channel, by all means, head over to the Code365 Startup Lab, sign up for any of the courses there. Again, all free and you'll get emails whenever um, whenever I release new content or whatever. I'm going to start sending emails out when I post new videos. I just don't want to be too annoying. Um, and then you've got another opportunities to support the channel just by going to pick up a hat or shirt or sticker. But anyway, team, that is it. It's your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, get out there, work hard on becoming the person you want to become so you can do the things you want to do and live the life you want to live, team. All right, that is it. I'll see you next time.